The programme challenges students to design, to test and to race miniature Formula One car. You create a team between three and six people. At the start of the competition, you're given a set of rules and regulations. It's about 40 pages long, depending on which class you enter into. And that will form the basis of your car. You design a 120th scale F1 car, and then you race it down the track. Students use CAD software like SolidWorks, Autodesk, and Flow Simulation software to test their cars. As well as that, you have to come up with a pit display, displaying your work, a presentation, and then also a portfolio. Students also have to market their team, get sponsorship, and give return on investment to the sponsors. Then you're graded on how many points you get for each of those different sections, and then, simple enough, the team with the most points at the end of the day wins. The challenge is three stages. First, there's a regional level. You go along with your team and you compete at regional level. If you qualify, you go to nationals, and uh, the winners of nationals and a few runners-up end up getting to represent their country at world finals. I'd say it is a hard challenge for the F1 programme. It challenges you as a person, it challenges your skills in different parts like engineering, managing people. And also raising sponsorship, that's one of the hardest challenges within F1. Such a big engineering side but also the business side of the competition is so important as well. There's lots of challenges that make this challenge even more challenging. <laughs> <laughs> When you're starting out, the thing to do is to really just see what areas people are interested in. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses. People with organisation take the management roles of the team. People with definite art skills take graphic design. People with hands-on experience go for manufacturing. Cooperating with your team and multitasking becomes very, very important. At the end of the day, you need it to be everybody's involvement because like in any business, you're not just working on your own, you're working a team. And this, at such a young age, really brings people together to show actually you need to work in a team and not on your own. Of course there's the competing side, which is the side I went through. The fact that everybody's had a little taste to know what engineering is all about is a huge part of what the school's aiming to achieve. Science and maths can be viewed by our young people as kind of nerdy areas, that kind of thing. When you involve things like racing cars, motorsport, Formula One, they get an idea of how you can use these very theoretical fields in a very practical way to create something not just cool, useful as well. F1 in schools is a great opportunity for engaging young learners in the STEM subjects because it incorporates all elements of STEM and it gives students life skills which they probably wouldn't receive from any other challenge. It's applying what you learn in the classroom to real life. And a lot more about the engineering side of things, presentation side of things, and even literature skills in the competition. Of course, you've got to write the portfolio, do the verbal presentation to the judges, and produce all the engineering drawings. So the benefits of the competition are just endless. There's not a whole lot out there for young people who are interested in, in science and engineering. That's the kind of thing that I think is really important, giving people a taste of the field that they wouldn't otherwise have within their education system. At the end of the day, it's a new experience, and you've got to take the most out of that.